Good morning, everyone. Today is 12-31-23, which means it's 1-2-3-1-2-3. And tonight is New Year's, which means we begin not just a new week today and not just a new day today, but a new month and a new year. But for us, the Jewish people, there's something else that's special about today, and that is that today we begin a new book of the Torah. Yesterday in synagogues around the world, we finished the book of Bereshit. We said, Chazak, Chazak, Venis Chazek. Let's be strong and continue the study of Torah. And today we begin studying the second book of the Torah, the book of Shemot, the book of Exodus, or in Hebrew known as the book of names. Now, as Jews, numbers are not just numbers. We all know at the Passover Seder, we have a song, who knows one, who knows two, Echad, Miodeya, Every number has an association. And one of the associations with the number one, two, three is found in Ethics of Our Fathers, Pirkei Avot, where it says, Al Shloshat Varim HaOlam Ome, the world stands on three things. What are the three pillars upon which the world stands? Torah, the study of Torah, Avodah, divine worship, service of God, and Gemilut Chasadim, acts of kindness, of loving kindness. Now, on New Year's, people have a custom of making resolutions. And today being one, two, three, one, two, three, we all know what goes after one, two, three. One, two, three, go. So it's like a new beginning, start. And what are the top resolutions that people make? So if you look up on the internet, you'll see the top resolutions are quit smoking, drink less, lose weight, get fit, exercise more, start a new career, save more money, travel more. While all of these are wonderful resolutions, for us, as we begin the book of Shemos, we have to think of more meaningful solutions. Because as I said, the numbers one, two, three, remind us of the three foundations upon which the world stands. And actually, this book that we're beginning of Shemot is all about those three foundations. You see, there's three sections to this entire book of Exodus. The first section is the story of the Exodus from Egypt which has many stories of loving kindness. You have the daughter of Pharaoh. That's the equivalent of the head of Hamas saving Jews. Moses is in a basket in the Nile, and she risks her life to save a Jewish child. She knows it's a Jewish child, but she has compassion. She has loving kindness in her heart, even though she was raised by Pharaoh, who was out to drown all the Jewish babies. And then Moses steps out of the palace to rescue Jews who are being persecuted. Again, acts of loving kindness. But then the ultimate act of loving kindness, where God takes us out from Egypt. And time and again, throughout the Torah, God will say, remember you were slaves in Egypt, you were persecuted, you were downtrodden, and therefore be sensitive, be empathetic, be kind to the plight of the downtrodden, the needy, the poor, the destitute, the widow, the orphan, the oppressed, because you know the pain, because you were slaves in Egypt. So the whole basis for our loving kindness is to pay forward the kindness God did for us when He rescued us and redeemed us with the ultimate act of kindness, taking us out of bondage and slavery. So the first section of Shemos is about loving kindness, one of the three pillars upon which the world stands. The second section of the book of Exodus is after God took us out of Egypt, He took us to Mount Sinai and gave us the Torah. The revelation at Mount Sinai, the greatest event in human history, the Ten Commandments. And therefore, it's about Torah, the study of Torah, the practice of Torah values, of morality, of ethics, of spirituality. And then the third section of the book of Exodus is about the building of the first tabernacle, the Mishkan in the wilderness, which is the prototype for every synagogue around the world where we perform divine worship. And so therefore, this entire book that we're starting today is about the three pillars. It's about loving kindness, about Torah, and about divine worship. And therefore, it behooves us on this New Year's. By all means, make resolutions to improve your life. But remember, to also make resolutions to study more Torah, to go to synagogue more often, and to perform more acts of kindness. It could be as simple as giving someone a genuine compliment, or making time in your weekly schedule to volunteer, to help others in need, or to be more charitable and more generous. That is our purpose in this world. Those are the pillars upon which the world stands. And that's what this New Year's 
especially as it's one, two, three, one, two, three tonight, calls upon each and every one of us to do. As we watch what's going on in Israel, we see a nation that is turning to one another with loving kindness, turning to God with more divine worship, with more faith, with more infusion of Torah values. And we could be so inspired to increase in our own lives. The women of Pambi Synagogue, 14 women, just came back on Friday from a trip to Israel, a mission to show love and support for our brothers and sisters in Israel. And one of the great heroes they were privileged to meet and hear a first-hand account from was a hero in Israel today. His name is Rami Davidian. Rami is a farmer who lives literally 10 minutes away from the border of Gaza in a moshav called Moshav Patish. And on the morning of October 7th, he got a call from a friend of his, desperately, frantically reaching out to him, saying, I know you live near Gaza. My daughter is at the Rayim Festival, the Nova Festival. And could you please go and try to find her and save her? And his friend shared his daughter's phone number, WhatsApp. He started texting with the girl. The girl was frightened. She was hiding underneath a bush. And because Rami knew the back alleys of the area, he knew the farmland, he's a farmer. Instead of taking the main road where the terrorists were waiting to shoot anyone coming or going and tragically killing 1,200 people that day, he took the back roads and through, she shared her Google Maps location with him and he managed to get to her and rescue her. And when he took her in the Jeep, other people started running towards him and he managed to get 12 young people in his Jeep and a couple sat on the roof holding on to the rack. He drove 15 survivors to his home in the Moshab, and then he went back to look for more. As word of what he was doing spread, people started sharing his name and number on WhatsApp groups, and suddenly he said his phone was blowing up with messages from desperate young people saying, come get me, save me, I'm here, I'm there. And all day he went back and forth, back and forth, and saved over the course of the day 750 people. A matter of fact, there was one incident where when he was coming into one of the kibbutzim, he saw a frightened young girl being held by three Hamas terrorists with machine guns. And he said he felt no fear whatsoever. And since he knew perfect Arabic, he put on an Arabic accent, and he came to these terrorists pretending to be one of the members of Hamas. And he said, look, the Israeli soldiers are coming. You guys better run. I'll take the girl into Gaza. And he, these Hamas terrorists believed him and handed over this girl to Rami as they fled. And he, of course, took her back to his home in the Moshav. He rescued countless lives. He's a hero in Israel today for his selfless devotion and sacrifice, risking his ho own life on dozens and dozens of trips back into a, the firing zone, into the terrorist zone to rescue and save beautiful lives. And these 750 people that he saved, most of them young people, are calling themselves Rami's children and thanking him for saving their lives. And Rami said, after the war is over, we're going to have a big celebration. We're all going to get together and celebrate the miracle of our survival. This is the story of heroism of the Jewish people. Like no other year, let us be inspired to make resolutions, to be prouder Jews, stronger Jews, more committed Jews, more engaged Jews, to stand up and strengthen the pillars upon which the world stands. As the world is shaking, as the world is beginning to crumble before our eyes, as we're seeing the evil rise up, not just in Gaza, but around the world with the supporters of evil. We as a Jewish people have to do more to strengthen the foundations and the pillars of goodness, righteousness, and morality. Let us make resolutions to be stronger Jews. Have a wonderful day and a good secular new year.